Okay, hi everyone. So welcome back. And today we are very fortunate to have Professor Lucy Osborne, who is part of the admission committee for the Institute of Medical Sciences or IMS joining us here today. Um, she is also cross appointed to a number of other departments and faculties. And so Professor Osborne, if I could ask you to just introduce yourself and then maybe tell us a little bit about your different affiliations and maybe just a little bit about your research interests. Sure. Um, so I am a professor in medicine. Uh, and my graduate appointments for students are in molecular genetics and Institute of Medical Science. And I'm also one of the graduate coordinators for the Institute of Medical Science. So I deal with um, student uh, queries, problems, um, basically we sort everything out for the students. Um, my other life, my, my hat uh, in the lab is uh, I work on the genetics of neurodevelopmental disorders. Um, I have a lab in uh, the West Tower of Mars. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, I think right now it's time where many students are thinking about graduate school. And I know one of the places that they're really interested in pursuing their uh, graduate studies is in IMS. And so we had a number of questions that students had submitted through social media, and I'm hoping that it's okay to run through some of those questions with you. Sure, yeah, go ahead. So IMS has a really wonderful website that lays out all of the different processes in the application, and it includes three different pillars, I guess, that um, IMS is looking for. One is academic excellence, which is very self-explanatory. Um, and the second is motivation and demonstrating motivation uh, for research. And the third is around reference letters. And I'm wondering if I could ask you for each of those different components, uh, a really brief question. And so for the first one around academic excellence. Um, so if a student doesn't have a perfect 3.7 over the last um, three out of the four years, um, would it, which should they bother applying or is there a little bit of leeway depending on how they do on the two other pillars? Absolutely apply. There's, uh, there's never any harm in applying. Um, the A minus average is a guide. We look for A minus in three of your four years of your undergraduate degree, um, but not all the students that come into the program meet that bar. Some, um, you know, some have a couple of years of A and maybe one of B plus or, or, or a couple of B plus. And it really, we look at the package. So we look at all three pillars. So if you're very strong in the other two and you don't meet the bar for the grades, absolutely we will look at you and we will certainly consider accepting you. Okay, that's wonderful to hear. Um, also for motivation, you, uh, I think in the website that I was taking a look at earlier along with some of the students, um, there were things that were given as examples. So working in uh, research labs, having research projects, being parts of different publications. Um, how, how valued is that uh, by the admission committee when they're examining uh, someone's application package? So research experience is really important. Um, I would say of the three pillars, this is probably the most important um, because it, it, can, it can counteract some deficiencies in the other ones. Um, we look, we really do look for some independent research experience. So we're not looking for you to, to have done a lab course uh, in class. We're looking for you to have done some volunteer work in a lab, uh, maybe a summer program or a third or fourth year project course where you spend a significant amount of time in a lab and you're really doing research um, under your own, under guidance, but under your own steam, um, not just following a recipe in a, in a course. Uh, so it's super important. So you can never start too early. <laughs> um, you know, I, I have students who've, who've come after first year or second year into summer programs and, you know, you will find a place sometimes. Uh, keep trying, uh, but it's super important. Um, we, we look at that very strongly, yes. And the last element um, to the application is the reference letter. Um, and I know uh, we had sort of chatted very briefly off camera about this. Um, are there things that you're looking for in particular uh, around these reference letters? Yes, we're really looking at why you want to do research and what kind of research you want to do. You know, we, uh, IMS has a very broad um, base of kinds of research, 
fac faculty all over in different hospitals all over the city that do all sorts of things. So just saying, oh, I really want to do a research master's doesn't help us understand whether you really want to do this and whether you're going to succeed in the program. Um, we want you to come in with some sort of idea about the research you're interested in. It doesn't matter why you're interested in that. Usually it's based on something you've had experience in during your undergrad. Um, but if it, it could be something you've just read widely about, sometimes it does in, in, you know, have, have an impact from personal experience. Um, but, but primarily we want to see what direction you're gonna go in and that you have some idea. Great, um, great points. And I'm also wondering uh, for the three reference letters that are required by um, the applicants, uh, is there anything that they should do or any suggestions that you might have for them when they're asking for reference letters? Um, well, you definitely need one from somebody who has supervised you in some sort of independent research. Um, you know, having three letters from people who've taught you in a course is not appropriate unless that course is one of, the, you know, a third year, fourth year project course. Um, you need that kind of reference to really attest to, to your ability, uh, not just with skills in the lab, but also critical thinking and that kind of thing. So that's important. Uh, almost everybody knows how to write a good reference letter. So I don't think you need to tell people what to write, but you did need to make sure you get the right people. That, that's great advice. Um, and I think that really emphasizing um, that you are, you're able to assess whether or not a student can succeed in a research environment uh, is like really important. Uh, I was also wondering, right now there's a pandemic going on around us. I'm sure it's affected your research. And I think it also affects a lot of the undergraduate students who are thinking about um, applying. It may not be this cycle, although I hope many of them do, um, but it may be future cycles where um, getting that early research experience is important. Um, do you have any ideas or suggestions? Is that something that IMS is considering or thinking about the, the fact that it's challenging right now for obtaining one of those research positions? Yes, it is challenging. I mean, you know, most of the summer programs for this year were cancelled. And so if you were relying on that as your, you know, chunk of research experience, you could be very disappointed. Um, we have not started uh, the cycle for next fall entry yet. So I'm not really sure what we're going to get. Um, we have not made any plans to change our criteria but we may find that we have to if we have a lot of applications from people who have whose you know attempts to do research have been thwarted due to the pandemic it's it's still a bit of a gray area right now i would say and that's why you know take every opportunity you can and don't wait till your fourth year to try and get some research experience in because things happen yes they sure do um i wanted to thank you for taking the time out uh, that those were some really great points uh, things that students may not have thought about beforehand we want to really help them to make the strongest application possible for uh, really competitive programs uh, like IMS. And I think you were mentioning that you receive several hundred um, applications uh, per year for IMS. Yes, we do. Yes, definitely hundreds. Yeah. So that but makes we, a really competitive program. Yeah, but we don't have a cap, which is nice. Um, uh, the number that people that we take in is limited by the caliber of the applicant and their ability uh, to find a supervisor. And again, just going off a little bit, um, is it detrimental at all to take an extra year? So for example, if a student has not quite met the bar in terms of academics or research, um, is it uh, considered a weakness or uh, working against the student if they perhaps come back for an additional year of study, get some extra research experience, or is that just considered part of the um, overall three-year package or the three years of experience? No, that's absolutely a great idea. Uh, very often our students do um, do an extra year, to, it, either for more research experience or to add some additional courses and do well in them. And sometimes stu students will also to go and do courses online to bump their grades up if they're really not, not fantastic. Uh, sometimes students will go and work for a year in a research environment after finishing, after graduating, just to get some really solid research experience. There's all sorts of paths to get there, um, to get the right package to put together. So, uh, but I would certainly encourage people to, to try with what they have. And we're also um, perfectly happy to give feedback to people if they come and ask after the application cycle is closed, so. 
Okay, so great advice, great insight. Thank you so much for spending the time telling us a little bit more about the IMS graduate program and for sharing your expertise. Thanks You're so much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.